Hello and welcome to the An Inspired Life podcast. This is the home of spiritual and also really raw human conversations that inspire us to stop talking about spirituality and actually live our divine truth. My name is Kiara O'Leary. I'm a divine change agent. A devoted stands for the undiluted divine power within each of us and your host. Every week I speak to an inspiring thought leader from around the world in an unscripted, we have no idea where it's going, totally intuitively guided conversation to bring you practical tips that you can apply immediately to create powerful shifts in your life. Each episode is also a potent transmission that will raise your vibration simply by listening. I'm honored to share with you this week's guest, Christian Stefan Martin. He's an unbound initiator, TEDx speaker, dancer, and explorer. He constantly sets himself a new vision that excites and calls him outside of his current limits and helps others to release themselves from their own inner cages too. He believes inner work times authentic expression equals unavoidable freedom. And today we talked about becoming limitless. In that, we discussed the importance of having a vision that excites you and makes you want to elevate your existence. Why needing to know the how keeps you limited and the antidote, Christian's one true step. How Christian listens to the 0.001% of his heart and holds his heart's integrity first and foremost. And why going deeper into our shadow parts is crucial when reaching for greater heights. This was a beautiful exploration of authenticity and how to open up to more of you and more in your life. So I hope you enjoy it. Listen up. Hey Christian, it is so awesome to be chatting with you and a little bit like nervy to be chatting with you. Like there's like butterflies in my stomach and in my heart, which is rare for me and exciting for me. So thank you for being here. You're welcome. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very, very excited. This is one of the most exciting things I think I've experienced this week. And I don't know why, I just, I was like, it's going to be a great podcast. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> amazing. No pressure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Zero. Yep. Awesome. Thank you. Um, so we are talking all about becoming limitless at the moment. And I would love to hear a bit about your story. So who were you before you realized that you could give yourself permission to be limitless and how's the journey been? And then tell us where you are now as well. I would love to hear all of that. Cool. (laughs) You look like, yes, someone just gave Mm. me permission to talk about how awesome my life is. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, actually. It's a bit like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I nailed it. Um, I feel like I can't, for like the last month, I've actually realised I feel like I can't breathe, like in in and around my throat. Mm. Um, yeah, and I know what I've tried to do, like from just sitting with it, kind of being like, what is this? Um, yeah, really, like, you know, something going on there. And I, that was simply to acknowledge that as present for me right now. Thank you. And let's roll with that coming up for you to share right now um, because I feel like one of the most powerful things that we can do that takes the limits off what we see as possible and that takes the limits off what we see Um, as possible, especially in our connection with other people, is to just simply speak whatever is coming up for us Mm. in that moment. Um, Like I said, I feel like butterflies in my tummy and in my heart and you're like, yeah, and I feel like I can't breathe. Um, And I think it's actually like for our community awesome because it's standard, but for a lot of people, really Mm. rare that we would just say like, hey, there's these scary things inside of my body right now that um, usually people hide and I'm going to say them so that I don't feel like I need to hide them. Mm. How has that impacted on your journey? What really comes up for me is to, to actually embody and have limitlessness, like to be unbound 
um, and it, for it to be a genuine, tangible, like lifestyle, financial, business, travel, like for it to become embodied and through into the physical realm, um, I don't think there's any way that we can do that without being present in the moment. And every, <laughs> yeah, anytime I clear, like if you want to call it clearing or just letting what comes up come out, um, you know, really sharing what's here, that, that brings me present. Like that brings me present. And I'm like, I'm no longer here, like with a little bit in the background going, oh, you know, I kind of can't breathe a little bit. Um, and I imagine maybe for you, you're kind of not really going, um, oh, you know, my, um, my heart, I'm a bit nervous, my heart's beating because it's been acknowledged, it's out into the open. And instead of like having kind of two walls between us, um, yours and mine, um, everything, well, you know, some things that are present are shared here. And it's just, a, in my experience, a deeper connection to myself now, to, to you, and to, like, whatever else is happening around us. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've kind of played with the idea. It's like, well, I feel like everything is created in the present, but I also have my own counter arguments to that, which aren't fully developed. So, like... <laughs> But, yeah. I saw Byron Katie speak last night, which was mm. profound. Um, and she, like, I feel like I'm really on the verge of actually living the truth that I am inside of my body and I am consciousness and I am creating everything around me and all of it is this, like, amazing illusion that I'm creating mm. with the divine, which mm. is me. Like, it's it's becoming not something that's just in my head, but I can feel that everyone is energy around me katie talks about how there is nothing else other than our present experience and she's like that person who said the last sentence like how can you prove that she existed how can you prove i said that sentence and mm. that future concept like of who you're going to be in the future you can't prove that that is ever going to exist either so all of it is just this like energy like mm. of possibility around us and none of it matters if you're not present in the current moment anyway. Totally. All right. I want to go back to your journey though, please, if we can. Mm. Okay. So uh, my journey began very early. I've had a lot of people say, did you have an awakening? And I'd have to say no. Like so many people, oh, yeah, at 22, at 32, I realized I hated my job and I was just unconscious the whole time and I just like quit, went and did a life coaching course and my world was forever changed. Um, so if I've had that, it happened very early on in my life. Um, <laughs> you're like six and you're like, I don't agree with this bullshit <laughs> at school. Well, you know what? When I was... When I was in, in year six, so what, 11, 11 years old or 12, going to high school, I knew that the, I knew the thing was you go to high school, then you go to university. And people were already telling me at that time, um, you'll go to university, then you'll specialise. And I, I at year, as an 11-year-old, I knew I wanted to study exercise science, but I also knew that I didn't want to just specialise. I, I, I literally said to myself, all right, I'm going to study osteopathy, psychology, nutrition, physio. Like I want to study everything because I love everything. And that was, that was before I knew there was a word called holistic. Um, and that was I'm surprised you knew there was a word called osteopathy. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, and... Yeah, so I mean, I, I knew very early on because I was a high-level basketball player. I was just under, um, I was kind of like the second from national level. Like I played against every other state, but then there's a level, one level above that. Um, and at 15, I joined a professional basketball team. Um, 
And, you know, that for me, I've, I've always been that, that was one, basketball was one of my biggest teachers. Um, I started playing when I was six for whatever reason. I was just a naturally studious person. Um, and I literally self-taught everything like um, psychology, visualization, plyometrics, fast twitch muscle fibers, recovery, nutrition. Um, and I loved getting, I loved bettering myself and I loved the feeling of helping others to better themselves. Mm. Um, so that's like where my performance side and human performance really started. But one thing that, um, one thing that was always, yeah, was in my path a lot was my relationship to girls during mm. high school, young women in my early 20s. Um, I was a good student. I was a great athlete. I had a lot of friends, you know, pretty popular. Um, but I perceived myself as not masculine enough um, because I didn't drink. You know, for me in Australia, growing up, it was like drink beer, how many girls can you get with on the weekend, um, play footy, uh, you know, be rough, be loud, be aggressive. And I, I was chill. I didn't drink beer, hated the stuff. Um, hardly partied and was fine with showing my emotions. Mm. Um, and so I'm like the opposite of you know, the stereotypical Australian, even though I probably look like what everyone thinks they are. Um, and, yeah, I really that inner perception affected my outer reality, of course. Mm. And um, very early on I learned that this, is, this created the cage and if this created the cage, it's definitely got to have the key. Mm, so the mind created the cage and then the mind has got to have the key. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. So you've been testing the limits of what is possible from a very young age then. Like it sounds like even in basketball you were like, okay, so this is what I've done today and what can I do tomorrow? Like just constantly striving to yeah. unleash yourself or unbound yourself even back then. Totally. Like I was – a freak of studying basketball like I would hire DVDs and I would like watch the my favorite players and the moves they did and I would rewind it I would slow my work I would watch like did they set that move up three steps before the defender two steps before the defender how at what angle was their body on um, did they go from slow to fast high to low low to high did they do two change of directions like I, I literally just like studied um, as much as I could to get better in any area. Wow, that's amazing. See, whereas I think that, um, oh, actually, when I was in high school, I was a huge studier and perfectionist, mm. huge. Like, I crippled myself. Like, I would come home with 97% and my mum would be like, how did you lose the 3%? And <laughs> I, 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 like, I crippled myself. But at the same time, I wasn't, yeah. my mum told me not to show my marks to other people because I would make them jealous that mm. um, I'd gotten such good marks. So I was, like, crippled, you know, either way. Um, mm. But, yeah, but I... I wanted to do that, but then when I've gotten like to understand spirituality, the idea of staring at a video and looking at all of those intricate details, like I could not do that. I would be like, I'll just upgrade my energy so I don't have to do all of those like technical details on the outside. Um, what do you feel like you were doing? That's modeling, right? You were doing modeling before you even understood what modeling was mm -hmm. so just in case the listeners don't understand do you want to talk to us about the way that you can learn from others in that sense and then I, i'm so excited about the next question that i've got the way that we can learn from others yeah the modeling stuff i don't even know really the word modeling doesn't really register for me mm -hmm. um but is it more along the lines of transmission osmosis embodiment that is like an upgrade to modeling. So modeling um, in NLP is mm. like neuro-linguistic programming is understanding what someone else is doing. What is their psychology mm. and mindset? What are their actual actions and habits? Mm. What do they think about or um, talk to themselves about just before they go ahead and do that thing? 
and you go and ask people or watch people and learn from people who are doing um, things and getting results in an area that you want and then you learn from them mm. so that you can do that. So you were doing that as a child anyway. Yeah, yeah, okay. So I definitely did that and I would, I would ask higher level um, like guys older than me Mm-hmm. How, how they prepared, how they went into a game, especially around mindset. Mm. Um, yeah, and, yeah, especially, yeah, especially around mindset. But, you know, one thing I guess I say to that is just because it worked for them doesn't mean it's going to work for you. And I feel like that's pretty, pretty common sense. But we're all wired differently. Our, our biochemistry works differently. Our muscles have different fa- fast twitch fiber, slow twitch fiber, um, you know, like all this stuff. So, like, mm-hmm. when it comes to business um, and, you know, human performance in, in business or coaching, um, yeah, I mean, I do look at people. I, it's the same. Just take, take what works for you and try it. Try it. See if it works for you. Mm. Awesome. Mm. So um, I saw you write a post about permission recently and um, it literally changed the way that I saw everything that I was doing, actually. I didn't realise how much what I was doing and who I was being was centred around permission, like the leaps that I'd taken in my own growth and the way that I was activating like my friends and my clients around me was so much about permission and until you said it I didn't realize that's what it was so I would love for you to share with us your take on permission and how it can help us to become limitless permission the first thing that comes up is I think permission is one of the energies that um I view it as an out in the world energy um Safety and trust are kind of energies that seem to help us gather ourselves, mm. and they, for me, come before permission. Mm. And then, I don't think there's an energy I've seen people work with more than permission that changes their ability to actually act in the world how they wish to. That's what comes up immediately for me. Mm. So I feel like, okay, so everyone who's listening to this podcast already recognises that our limits are self-imposed. Like mm-hmm. I, I'm going to just make that assumption that we've been listening, listening long enough that we understand that it's in our mind and that our limits are self-imposed and that we are infinite divine potential. So in terms of recognising that anything, literally anything is possible, and I've talked about this enough times, like Hmm. mentioning quantum physics and stuff in past ones, so we won't go back into that. But if anything is possible, what are the barriers between that huge infinite amount of possibility and us actually living that and like us living in these limited trapped lives Hmm. when anything is actually possible and one i see as huge is permission but you know i'd love for you to either continue to talk about permission or to tell us what else is coming up for you in terms of those barriers definitely yeah the the four energies that keep repeating for me is safety trust permission and worth Mm -hmm. um they are what I call the four foundational, the, the four dynamic pillars of effortless expression. Mm-hmm. And whatever we express, whether it's verbally, physically, energetically, so we don't even have to say anything, but whatever we are expressing, um, so I guess another word for that is vibrating, emanating, sharing, um, doing, that's what creates our reality. Mm. Um, in terms of oh, there's, there's, a, there's like the energetic side then there's the practical side um, give us both 
Yeah, yeah. Okay. I feel like going to the practical side first. On the practical side, um, if uh, uh, I feel like this is something I've been playing with recently and so I'm kind of feeling, I'm a little bit like scattered right now, stumbling a little bit with this, but um, I've decided to change who I work with um, and because I've kind of been cruising a little bit lately, um, what I've been doing is it's, it's easy, which is great, but it's, it's not essentially making me elevate my existence. Mm-hmm. Um, it's kind of like, well, I could do it for the rest of my life and things for me, my reality might stay relatively the same. Mm-hmm. So you could call that like a plateau. And what's, what's really been exciting me um, and what I know is going to push my limits is actually stepping into the unknown. Mm. Like I've now, there's now clients that I want to be working with. Um, I, I, yeah, I said it to you before we started recording this. You know, I want to be working with Forbes 30 under 30, people on that list, mm. like disconnected playboys that have, you know, whether they're a man or a woman, that have, you know, a lot of financial, a lot of physical um, business success, but their inner connection is, you know, not as they want it. They're empty, they second guess themselves, they're alone, whatever. So just putting that there, I don't know how to get to those people mm-hmm. or attract to those people. And that's really cool to me because I've now got to, like, I've got to work on myself mm. to get there. Um, and so, and that really excites me. For some people, like the unknown, like for a lot of people, if it's unknown, like they really, we, okay, here we go. I, I, so many people really need to see how to get there first. Mm. And I would say it's not, I would say the part of people that wants that is the mind and the ego. Mm. Um, I've for, you know, a long time now said that the mind wants all the pieces of the puzzle mm. before it even acts. Yeah. I need, I need letters X through Z to steps through one, one to 100 if I'm even going to act. Mm. And that's like, that's actually people just saying, I need safety and certainty in my life um, so that I can step out. Mm. And I do the opposite of that. Mm. Um, And sometimes, like, I hear society's voice in my head or, um, you know, people around me in my head being like, ah, you're crazy. Like, Mm. you can't, like, you can't just say yes and figure it out. Like, you need to be more responsible or whatever the criticisms are, but my belief is if we just commit more to this future reality, more to the bigger version of us than the smaller version of us, if we choose to live as this expanded version and just figure out the how along the way, that that decision, that commitment and that like leap of faith is what allows all the other pieces to just fall into place. So I love that you've just identified like the first step to being limitless is literally to just like kind of like park, (laughs) park your flag over in this new reality. And then you figure out how to take the limits off. And the first limit like is to just be willing to say that you want it and that you're going for it. Yeah, totally. And like, for me, I believe that we're to project onto other people. We need to, get uncom- uh, get comfortable being in get comfortable being uncomfortable um mm. and yeah it definitely it's just a funner journey for me to be honest like now mm. um and trust trust mm. trust our heart trust that will be provided for um yeah, and really take what I call one true step. Um, so, like, you might have, it might be a, a hundred piece uh, jigsaw puzzle, and you might have steps one, two, and three, but not four. Great. Take steps one, two, and three. 
Mm. It's like, you know, one foot in front of the other and check in with your heart, your body uh, along the way. Mm. Mm. Like you and I are both right now in California and Mm. we both had kind of no idea what was going to happen here. Neither of us had booked accommodation. We're not like, we're not taking this journey together. We came separately. Yeah. Um, and magic has unfolded along the way because we took steps one, two, and three, like booked, like booked the flights. <laughs> I don't yeah. know about you. I booked my travel insurance from the airport on the way over. Over. I did too. Oh, good. Okay, awesome. See, we're just like living as yeah. as it comes up. Um, yeah. One steps one, two, and three, and magic has unfolded since. Mm. Um, but I want to go back to so you have this bigger vision for your business right now Mm -hmm. and it's scary but you've gone okay I'm going to park my flag over here and I'm just going to make it happen and that's all so what are some of the fears that come up for you and for your clients and for like you know kind of everyone when you take this maybe if you think back to when you were more scared of being uncomfortable that might be more helpful so you parked your flag over here you're like I want this holy shit what fears come up around that and what limits come up around that yeah the the first thing for me with this new thing was i don't know how Mm. like i just said so that was like you know i know how to do what i've been doing i know how i could continue to work with that um and stuff so the first thing was i don't know how Mm. And um, I imagine that happens for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. For me, though, like I said, I re- I've relished that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that, that's that now. I, thinking about other people and clients, um, <sighs> there's a lot, a lot to do with identity and expression. Mm-hmm. To, the same. Um, I think a lot of people, because like our energy and our identity is established in the world, mm. um, then it's really like, oh, you know, what are people going to think if mm. I completely want to f- flip who I, you know, if I want to do a 180, start wearing like, <laughs> I don't know, white robes or gothic clothes, or who, like who knows, whatever they want to <laughs> express. Um, it's like, oh, what will people think of me? Um, what will my parents think of me? What will my clients think of me? Like if, the, if you're a coach or a healer and you're wanting to change up things. Um, yeah, so there's, so there's that. Can I actually just jump yeah. in there? Yeah. So this is going to be really excited. Um, so I'm listening to Russell Branson's book, Expert Secrets, at the mm-hmm. moment blowing my mind um and he talks about how people are terrified to lose status it's like (laughs) one of the biggest fears that we have (laughs) hold up let me get my excitement yeah you you go you go yeah so we're afraid of losing (laughs) afraid of losing our status Mm. um and i think that goes back to tribal stuff so it's like Mm. if we like so that say say like if we go for something and we fail then that's like a fear that we'll lose the status of like we're now a failure and then maybe we'll get kicked out of the tribe because we failed or Hmm. um if we like if we have a dream and we don't go for it it's like standard and we can still hold on to the dream and like that's not that scary Hmm. but if we go for the dream and then we fail then people can see us fail and that's what is scary. We're more scared of people seeing us fail than we are of never actually going for the dream in the first place. And he even talks about um, we want a Ferrari to raise our status, but in some cases the Ferrari would actually decrease our status because people would be jealous of us and they would hate us. So Mm. then we would be kicked out of the tribe. So there's like the high end of the scale of like, don't want to upset the status there. And the low end of the scale, don't want to be too much of a failure that you upset your status there. And I think so much of our limits is about caring what other people think and how our status looks on the outside so much so that we'll just like continue with the status quo so that we don't have to shake things up. Great play on words. 
<laughs> I didn't mean that. I was like, nailed it <laughs> as I came out. <laughs> oh, man. I couldn't think of anything more boring to me right now than staying comfortably in the status that I have. But how did you get there? Yeah, yeah I know, I know. Um, <laughs> so... Uh, the qu- the question that just pops up is like, do you do you really want it? Mm. Um, and psychologically, I I fully understand. So he that what you just spoke to is our reptilian brain, and our reptilian brain. How much do you know about that? Tell us all. Yeah, we don't. We haven't cool. talked about that before. So there's the reptilian brain, the mammalian brain, and then the human brain. And the, the, to work backwards, human brain in like two words is um, analytical, logical, used for problem solving. And it can see into the past, it can see back into the past and plan and project for what might happen in the future. So mm-hmm. plan solutions. Mammal- uh, your yeah, mammalian brain, um, responsible for uh, emotions, uh, empathy, love, social connection and support. And the reptilian brain um, responsible for, in this order, safety. Um, so have I got a house? Is well, Have I got shelter? Is anything a threat to me? Sustenance and then sex. But sex for the purpose of furtherment of the species. Mm-hmm. So our reptilian brain, um, we need it because otherwise our, we throw the concept of safety and survival out the window. Um, part of that is the tribe we exist in and the status or identity we occupy. Mm. Um, the, we, at birth, we get given our parents and, our, and the societal blueprint of how to grow up and have a life at that time Mm. Um, that blueprint is essentially you could call that a survival blueprint Mm. this is how to survive on earth according to mom and dad and society right now so most people are probably at the same if unless they if you don't do work generally you stay at the same kind of status and dynamic you have the same people around you for at every age you are Mm -hmm. if you then decide to do work so what's your age 26 cool 27 when's your birthday christmas day (laughs) is it yeah no it's not yeah you're triggering my this podcast is not about me christian um a thing <laughs> I'm like, okay let's focus on the audience that's really cool thank you for triggering that for me that's all right um so, yeah anytime that we try to move from where we currently are like our, our reptilian brain which is like literally at the back here is going this is like flipping through the pages going oh that's not on the survival blueprint because mm. the survival blueprint is has got you to here so if you start looking at a different book that's not the survival blueprint, even if it's like the, th- the thrival freaking Bible or something, how to thrive, um, it's different. Mm. It's different to what we've done and it's unknown. So that's really scary. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So we have all of these agreements about how we need to show up so that we can continue to survive and our parents will continue to support and accept our decisions and us. Yeah. And then we get to continue to be a part of the tribe. Um, mm. I don't know about you, but I look at some of my friends who haven't um, done the work and they still mm. get to have similar friends. Like They're like, I've had this same friend for like 17 years. And I'm like, yeah, that's fantastic. I do not have um, mm. many long-term friends, especially mm. not long-term friends that I really resonate with because I'm shifting so much that my Mm. tribe around me constantly does shift as well. And so it can get lonely. And as humans, we don't like to be lonely. We don't like to leave people behind. um, And we don't like to be left behind either. Totally. 
Yeah, because mm-hmm. that's a that is a direct um, threat to survival. Like we actually, I, I first the other day understood the the saying of back to back or I've got your back. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, you know, certain indigenous tribes when they went hunting, they would literally stand back to back because you can't mm-hmm. see behind you. So you've got like two eyes that way and two eyes that way. Um, mm-hmm. So we needed social um, support and, and tribal structures. Mm, mm. Like that's just hard, great, hardly ingrained in us. Yeah. yeah. And the parking our flag in mm. our future reality that is desired, that to me, to get there, I have to be willing to give up the identity that I have now the mm-hmm. people that I have around me now and anything that is in the way of this future reality. Like it has to be, I have to become defenseless, unattached and totally willing. Mm. And I think that is one of the things that keeps people stuck is that they're not willing to give up what they have there so that they can then see what happens on the other side. But yeah. You and I have now done it so many times that we know that if you just like take the leap, then like, <laughs> yes, some people leave, some things leave, but over the other side, more magic comes in. It is always replaced. Like Martini's work is like something leaves, something comes in, always replaced. Yeah, one thing that also I wanted to share earlier was I, I interviewed Elliot Hulse um, like last week or the week before, and he said, don't try and make the right decision make the decision right. Mm. And he said, um, uh, decide and devote or something like that. So decide and devote your energy to making it the right thing. Mm. And I like that. So I want to go then to your current example that we're using. Mm -hmm. You've got this big leap of faith you put your flag over there now what kind of steps are you going to take and what kind of steps would you coach your clients to take to release those limits so Hmm. that you can get to the other side Hmm. um yeah i'm probably just about to start with two new mentors Mm -hmm. um that i highly resonate with Mm-hmm. Um, there's a there's thousands of people who have the type of lifestyle and success and business that I'm doing, but I don't resonate with all of them. So the two that I have come into contact with here, highly like it's like are we the same person type of thing? Like you're me, ten years older, you know. Mm. Um, so that is that feels really true to me is to let, actually I'm letting go of another mentor soon probably um, and going to start with this new one who has a different energy, a different approach. Mm. Um, and that feels great to me because whilst this other mentor, he's he certainly has the type of business and lifestyle that I want and is doing work, The work that work doesn't feel as true and as calling to me right now. Mm. So... Um, for me, it's kind of, you know, what I'm feeling right now is it's almost a case of um, letting go of something that, like, might be a, um, my heart says, 98% of my heart says yes, or, like, you 70, or, like, but I've been um, saying to people right now, I'm listening to, like, the point zero zero one last percent of my heart. Um is it a yes from from that very edge of my heart or that very like bullseye of my heart mm-hmm. um, and holding the one of my favorite phrases is, is holding my heart's integrity right now mm. and how do you hear your heart oh sometimes really obviously and sometimes it takes great listening and a lot of stillness Um, It takes questioning and it takes honesty with myself. Um, Yeah, that is, if there's one up level to have, it's it's that, listening to the very last degree of your heart. 
Thank you. Can I, if I give you an example of that, um, practically, I've got one as it pertains to relationships, which I'd love to go there, but I also don't want to go there. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I probably shouldn't have just said that at all. But um, I, I feel like this is an indicator of if you're not listening to your heart is if you are uninspired, if you're bored, um, if you're tired in thinking, if, in even thinking about doing something. Mm. So I've created a course called Effortless Expression and one of the pillars of it is safety. Um, when I was thinking about what music to play to facilitate people connecting to more and activating more safety within themselves, I started thinking about really womb type music in the womb, deep, you know, stuff like that. And I just, like, had this moment, and I'm so happy that I caught it, of, like, I don't really, I don't like that music. Like, I don't want to play womb music. That's not me. Mm. And I realised that I was starting to think about creating something based on what I had experienced, like mm. what, what's already been done. And um, I was like, that's not me. And I don't know if I've told you this story, but um, then I was like, I love hip hop, love r and It's like, can I use safety to facilitate, can I use hip hop and R&B to facil facilitate safety? And I'm like thinking of like <laughs> people getting down to this gangster music and I, I'm like, I can probably do it because I feel like anything can be done. But what actually happened was it birthed a whole new direction for me to go in. Mm. And because, like, once I went, oh, my God, that's what I want to do, the whole plan, the whole, a whole new workshop just dropped into place and I put that out there and I got such a great response to it because I think it was so uniquely me. Mm. Mm. I find that I have to be really on that as well. Like, mm. I go, so I might wake up. And I sit in front of my altar and surrender all mm. of my expectations, all of my attachments, um, all of my plans. And then I allow the divine to guide me. And then I get so inspired. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, this is going so well. And then I take back control. And mm. that's when I'm like, my mind jumps in and is like, so like I've seen it done like this. And blah, blah, blah. and then and then I get tired instantly again. And so mm. I have to like really be aware when do I come like, when do I feel like this is great flow? Okay, now control the flow. And that little shift is when you mm. step out of your heart and into your head. You step mm. out of service and joy and into, like, how can it be done and, like, externally um, yeah. wanting validation and all yeah. of that sort of stuff as well. Yeah, so, okay, we have to finish up soon. So I want to go back to you've parked your flag on the other side. Okay. All right. So I want you, so you, you talked about mentors and mm. I think basically if I can sum that up, pick a mentor who already embodies what you want to embody. Yeah. So imagine that I'm your client and I come to you because you already embody what I want to embody. Tick, done. Now I'm telling you, here's this future reality that I want. What would you suggest that people ask themselves right now who are listening yeah. to identify where they're placing those limits so that they even know what limits they're coming up against? That's an insanely good question. For me, it always started with emotional charge. Mm. That is a very good place to start in terms of triggers because that, that which we're triggered by um, generally causes a very unconscious, reflexive, reflexive, reactive behavior. Mm. Um, and, w you know, for me, when I'm triggered, um, everyone is a little different, but for me, I tend to uh, switch off. Mm. Um, I kind of contract instead of open. Well, like quite literally, my, I can feel my body contract. My energy goes down. Um, like I get tired. Mm -hmm. And for sure, my subtle energy, my vibration, that's changed. Mm -hmm. um, so 
yeah, that's, that is something I practiced for a long time is listening when I'm emotionally charged. Mm -hmm. And then I ask a lot of questions around the charge. So I ask what part of that um, kind of caused the reaction or what part of that did I react to? So like, let's say it's, you know, something you said, um, it's like, did the, did your tone cause it? Was it a word? Was it your body language? Um, was it maybe, maybe I was, we're sitting, you know, face to face and, um, a guy walks past and like your eyes just go with him and maybe it brings up, I'm like, ah, oh, like if this may take time, but it, you can get really fast at it once you've practiced. So mm-hmm. be like, oh, um, man, Kiara, when she looked at that guy, I got really triggered. Oh, what was that about? Oh, is she, is she more interested in being with him? Okay. What's that about? Oh, like, you know, ah. Oh, it's it's triggering my um, feelings of not being good looking, something like that. And then it's like once you've identified the actual, like what what it is underneath all of that, then there's various amounts of work and techniques you can do. You can do Byron Katie's work. You can do embodiment work. Um, you can do kinesiology and clearing. So... Um, but what really worked for me was um, journaling, mm. to journal a lot and just have a conversation with myself, um, ask myself more questions. One of the best things that um, my dearest friend JP Sears taught me was that um, sometimes it's not even about the answer. The, the question itself opens your energy to mm. changing because like a question is like it's it's open it's like oh i've got to there's something you know it's like it opens and i'm searching for something I, i'm i'm looking around i'm feeling into things it's it's anything could be the answer to the question so i'm i'm totally open and then an answer actually is definitive so it brings it back in mm. and answers mm. of course help at times but it like it's just that like open close open close you know that Mm. type of thing that's what i'm really excited about at the moment actually Mm. is like if we like i feel like so much of the work that is currently out there Mm. is about upgrading our belief system so especially Mm -hmm. personal development like i can't do it yes you can okay like now i believe that i can Mm. and we think that that is making us limitless but it's just creating a different limit so maybe we're like i can't make a hundred thousand dollars a year okay, yes, I can. All right, cool. But then you can't make a million dollars a year and then you have to like upgrade to that level as well. Mm -hmm. But what I think actually truly makes us limitless is to ask a question and leave it unanswered. To go Mm. like, I can't make $100,000 a year. Well, is that true? And like do Byron Katie's work. Is that true? How can, can I absolutely know that that is true? No, I can't. And then you just like leave it. So it's like just the thought was questioned and no thought replaced that. That is limitless, not just Mm. upgrading our belief system because we have to keep upgrading it then. Yeah. Yeah. To to say another thing that JP has said often, it's um, have beliefs but don't believe your beliefs. Mm. And I love that because like to me, I believe right i'm willing to be proven wrong or otherwise i believe that beliefs are not real we just um they're not factual sorry they're not Mm -hmm. factual we just provide evidence either way to put enough coins in that basket to believe okay yeah i'm gonna believe like now i think that's true Mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah there's that and there was something else that I just want to, ah, there's, there's a lot of questions that are definitely unanswered. You, you, like you said, like unanswered or recurring questions. Mm-hmm. Like for me, so I've said this to a lot of clients recently. I said, that's probably like your answer might, you get an answer right now if you need an answer, but don't think that that's going to be a definitive answer for the next 20 years. You could ask mm-hmm. yourself the same question in a year. A different answer the opposite answer might come up yeah, yeah yeah I feel like um 
that for me true freedom and true limitlessness mm. is coming at the moment from that like holding the paradox of life in like like i am everything and i am nothing at the same mm. time i am important and i am like the same as everyone else like yeah I have a really important role to play in this world. And if I did nothing, it's all perfect anyway. There's like, hmm. like I, I'm struggling. I'm trying to write a book at the moment and I've like almost struggled because I'm like every sentence that I would say, like every time I try to write like a quote image or something, I can come up with the opposing um, yes. argument to that. Yeah. And I think that the limitlessness comes from believing nothing almost mm. like as much mm. as we possibly can taking yeah. those beliefs away. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great, that's a, that's one of the wisest positions and most powerful positions. I feel like we can, well, I can move from. And I, that's something I do work with my clients. Um, I believe every time we hit a, a, a threshold for our mm. current reality, like we're on the verge of things changing, like we've got our vision, and it's like, yes, I'm like, I'm that, I'm that greatness. Anytime we reach higher, we inevitably come up against um, our shit. Mm. So the higher we reach, the deeper the world goes in. Oh, fuck. Like, <laughs> there's a lot of shit to work on. And that's one of the most beautiful things. And um, for me, I practice sitting with both of those things. Because I feel like both of those things are a reality. I'm not trying to force myself into like my mindset to be a certain way. It's I think it's just super real and super authentic and super powerful to take the stance you just um, you know talked about practicing, and then from there, it's like it's a choice for me. It's a choice. It's like I don't have to. Be, I don't have to have a belief. To, in order to actually achieve or go and do something. Like so many people say to me, oh, I need to be more confident to go and speak to that person. What if you don't? I love the space that is left after what if you don't. Hmm. Yeah. What if that's not true? Yeah, because then it's a condition. My behavior, I can only exhibit this behavior if I have this belief. I loved what you said about if you want to get to a greater height, Mm. that you also need to be willing to go to a greater depth below of your shadow as well. Mm. So just yesterday morning and like the afternoon before that, I was like, what am I doing in California? This is a mistake. And, um, and I've done enough of that journey now that I can hold space for myself to go into the greatest like depths of my weakness and my unworthiness and all of that kind of like murky stuff that I wish that like I used to wish wasn't even there. And because I was willing to go into that darkness, I woke up today still kind of like couldn't be bothered and then just whoo, like everything opened up again and I have not been able to stop download, downloading ideas. I feel like everything is working out and like I'm high, like so high on life. But it couldn't like that new level couldn't have come without me being willing to like dig my roots down further first. Yeah. And I think that if you want to hold anything, you have to be willing to hold the contrast of it. If you want to hold more success, you have to be willing to like be okay with more failure along the way. Like anything that like, if you want to place a limit on um, if we're placing a limit on what we want, it's because on the opposite end, we're placing a limit on what, like we're not willing to experience. I didn't even know that until I said it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, put that in a meme and share it. And then I would have some compo like some contrasting paradoxical thing to say <laughs> to me saying that, but yeah. Yeah. Cool. So I love that. And something that uh, a question I asked myself the other day um, and a question I've asked myself numerous times is, you know, if I know this, does it even help me? Mm. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. I don't know if we actually found out, I'm sure we'd be able to use it somehow, but if we found out there was a parallel universe, how much would that help me day to day? 
Well, actually, personally, yeah. I fucking love quantum physics because yeah. the idea that there are parallel universes has helped me to understand. And this is like, so I do the same thing as you. So I've just gone, how does this help me? And then cool, I'll take it on board. Yeah. The, like quantum physics has shown us that there are parallel universes. And so I'm like, that's fucking amazing because that means that there is a universe right now where I already am standing on stage in front of thousands of people and I'm living my dream life. So if she's done it, of course I can. And so it helps me. Like I just used it to be like, of course I can have everything that I desire because in some way it's already happened. So now I just need to follow the guidance to go along that path. Well, but is this the parallel universe is what if that's not happening in the parallel universe? I believe every, and again, I just picked my beliefs about that. Right. Like I also believe that none of it even matters. So there's like the paradox again, but I picked my beliefs about that. And I was like, um, everything that has ever, like every possible opportunity, um, like the shittiest parts and the most amazing parts and, also none of it is shitty and none of it is amazing like Mm. (laughs) again i'm like doing my head in with that but anyway um all of them all of the possible realities have Mm. already happened and so i just get to pick which one i want to play in so yeah yeah exactly but i i love what you're saying like just look at whatever someone is telling you and go does that help me and so i was like I'll take that because that helps me. But with other stuff, I'm like, mm, like um, the idea of aliens in um, other star universes and stuff like that. We've talked about it once on this podcast. Uh, mm. Like I know so many people I really respect that believe that. I haven't got in there yet. And I'm like, I don't really know how that would help me right now. So I'm just going to keep focusing on what does help me right now. Yeah. Hmm. I love the discernment of what beliefs actually help all right so we need to finish up so can you tell us like if you're going to wrap it all up and give them like one sentence or one piece to take away what would you want to tell people who feel limited right now and want to become limitless to move from your current limitations (laughs) it's kind of like moving from current limitations to less limited limitations in a way really um that may or may not be true but to move from (laughs) limited to uh unlimited relative speaking to where you are uh i believe a vision is very important Mm. to know if you need a vision ask yourself is everything in my life exactly as i want it to be right now if every if you answer yes to that don't create a vision if you answer no then look at the parts of your life that you want to be different and ask yourself how you want them to be. Mm. Create a vision based on that because there's nothing like um, trying to create something that is not your current reality to bring your limitations and shit up, right? Because mm. um, if, st- if, if I didn't have a vision and I was like, my, my life is good right now, I wouldn't, and I didn't try to stretch my current reality. I wouldn't come up against my stuff. I just mm. stay where I'm at. Um, yeah. So create a vision, and then along the way, you you will come up against self worth. You know, sexual insecurity. Um, you know, do I deserve this? Uh, what if mm. I fail? Like, whatever comes up for you, um, it's all great that is the time to, you know, start addressing those charges, Mm -hmm. um, those emotional charges, those triggers. um, And, I mean, we've spoken about a number of ways to go about them. Mm -hmm. Get a mentor, look at the part that um, triggers you. Um, Also, on the opposite of that, like let's say there's times where you notice you feel really confident and there's times where you notice that you feel super shy. I get really curious about what what else was I feeling? What else was in my environment or part of my experience that made me feel shy or that I decided to feel shy in that moment? Um, what, sorry, what was it in, in that moment of confidence that was there 
which made me feel confident. So then I can replicate that as well. Mm. Um, mm. Or like it doesn't literally have to be in the environment, but it could be in my internal environment. Yeah. Um, yeah. That goes back to the similar thing to modelling as well. Yeah. Yeah. How can you replicate what someone else is doing or what you did in another situation that worked? Exactly. Mm, awesome. Thank you so much, Christian, for sharing all of this juicy goodness with us. How can people come and find you if they would like to connect? Yeah, so there's um, my website, christianstephanmartin.com, and then there is my Facebook page, my personal page, send me a friend request, that is Christian Charles. So Christian is with K at the start and mm -hmm. Stefan is with a PH, but everything else you will figure out. So christianstephanmartin.com and then Christian Charles is his Facebook page. And again, that's still with a K for Christian. So thank you very much, Christian, and I will see you in the secret episode. <laughs> thank you for having me. I hope that you enjoyed listening to that podcast just as much as I enjoyed recording it. Um, I love the way that Christian will not answer until he's listened to himself first. Like the way that every word that comes out of his mouth is truly his own authentic expression. And I hope that you felt that as a transmission of permission to only speak what is true to you in that moment as well. If you enjoyed that podcast and you'd like to know more about the behind the scenes of Christian's life, including what he does when he first wakes up in the morning and how he's just recently shifted that to be more conducive to the life that he wants. Um, we talked about his own journaling practices, like what he actually does when he's journaling. And absolute gold, we talked about his embodiment practices and how he does that. And I even got stuff that I wanted to go away and implement immediately. So I hope that you take the time to listen to that and you can get access at aninspiredlife.com.au forward slash secret. And you can also come and join a community of hundreds of light workers and share with us what did you receive from this transmission? What did you realize you were limiting yourself in and how you could let yourself have more freedom and a more limitless life just by listening to this podcast and then taking action on it? I'd love to hear that one nugget that you got out of it. Head to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash lightworkers rising. You can come and join hundreds of lightworkers just like you who are taking this path and feel supported and safe and have a sacred place to come home to all the time on your journey. Thank you so much for doing this work for you and for the world. When you're changing your internal world, you are changing everything around you. And I am so on it to be able to hang with you on this journey. Thank you so much. My name is Kiara. It is an honor to be here and I will see you next week.